The Taxi That Hurried by Lucy Mitchell, Irma Black, and Jesse Stanton. Illustrated by Tabor Gurgley. Read by Ben Hobbes. Once there was a taxi. It was a bright yellow with two red lines running around its body. Inside, it had a soft leather seat and two hard little letdown seats. It was a smart little taxi, for it could start fast. Jerk whiz! It could tear along the street. Whiz squeak! And it could stop fast. Squeak jerk! Its driver name was Bill. Together, they were a speedy pair. One day, the taxi was standing on the street close to the sidewalk. Bill and the little taxi didn't like to stand still long. I wonder who will be our next passengers, thought Bill. Just then, Bill heard some feet running on the sidewalk. Thump, thump, thump. And he heard some smaller feet pattering along too. Thumpity, thumpity, thumpity. He leaned out and saw Tom with a little suitcase and Tom's mother with a big suitcase. And both of them were breathing hard. Oh, gasped Tom's mother. Taxi driver man, please drive us to the station as fast as you can. We're very late and the train won't wait. Oh, oh, oh. Tom and his mother tumbled into the taxi and slammed to the door. Sure, lady, answered Bill. We're a speedy pair. We can get you there. Away went the taxi. It liked to tear along in a hurry, purring softly. It rushed down the street like a yellow streak with the two red lines blurred into one around its middle. It wiggled through the traffic. Tom and his mother bounced and jounced on the leather seats. Tom's mother sat on the wide, soft one behind. But Tom sat on a hard little one so that he could look out the window. Then suddenly, squeak jerk, the taxi stopped short. It stood stock still in the middle of the street. The head shone a bright red light. Underneath the light stood a big traffic policeman holding up his right hand. Tom's mother called through the window. Taxi driver man, must you stop when lights are red? We simply have to get ahead. We're terribly late and the train won't wait. And Bill answered, Surely, lady, you've seen how cars must wait until the lights are green, but we're a speedy pair. We'll surely get you there. Then suddenly, jerk whiz, they were off again down the crowded street, for the light had changed to green again. Away went the taxi, down the street faster than ever. Now it had to turn and twist, for the street was full of traffic, trucks and wagons and other taxis. The little taxi hurried past them all like a yellow streak, and people could hardly see Tom's little face looking out of the window as he bounced and jumped by. My, said the people on the sidewalk, that's a speedy taxi. I wonder why it's in such a hurry. Lucky it's got such a good driver. The taxi wiggled around a big bus. It jiggled across a trolley track. Then suddenly, squeak jerk, the little taxi stopped short again. It stood stock still behind a big coal truck that was backing up to the sidewalk. For the driver was trying hard to get his truck just the right way for the black coal to go jumping and clattering down its slide into a hole in the walk. Tom stood up so he could see the big coal truck better. He could see the handle on the side. He wished he could watch the driver turn that handle and make the big truck tip up in front. He almost wished they weren't in a hurry. Tom's mother called through the open window. Taxi driver man, first it's a cop that makes you stop and now we're stuck behind a truck. We're awfully late and the train won't wait. So Bill called to the truck driver. Please will you try to let me get by? And the truck driver grinned and stopped his truck. Carefully and slowly, Bill squeezed by the big coal truck close to the sidewalk. Bill called over his shoulder. We're a speedy pair. We'll get you there. So now the taxi went so fast that people skipped up onto the sidewalk as it went by and everyone thought, that's the speediest taxi I ever saw. Then suddenly, squeak jerk, the taxi stopped short and Tom almost fell through the front window. Tom's mother bounced so hard on the wide leather seat that her head whacked the ceiling of the taxi. Her hat slid down over one ear, her big suitcase fell over with a bang on the floor, and Tom's little suitcase hopped off the seat. Tom's mother pulled her hat on straight again, then she looked at her watch. Then she looked out of the window at all the taxis and buses and trucks. Once more, she called to Bill at, on the front seat. Taxi driver man, first it's a cop that makes you stop, then you get stuck behind a truck. Now the traffic is in our way. We're likely to sit here the rest of the day. We're horribly late and the train won't wait. So Bill began to blow his horn. Honk, honk, shrieked the little taxi. Honk, honk, honk. We want to go. You make us slow. We're a speedy pair. We want to get there. Honk, honk. Honk, honk. The nearer they came to the station, the more taxis and buses and trucks they were on the street. Suddenly they stopped, and Bill blew the horn again. Honk, honk, honk. Down the street, up above the station, they could see the big station clock. In five minutes, the train would go. They really were very terribly, awfully, horribly late, and they knew the train wouldn't wait. Then suddenly, jerk, jerk, the traffic began to move. 
First a taxi, then a bus, then a truck, then more taxis, more buses, more trucks, till the whole line was moving. The speedy little taxi wiggled through the traffic. It dodged around a bus and twisted around a truck, and it whizzed past a taxi. Tom's mother kept looking at the big station clock. It said four minutes before the train went, then three minutes, then two minutes, and the little taxi drew up by the station. Tom jumped out of the taxi while his mother gave Bill the money. She grabbed her big suitcase, Tom grabbed his little suitcase, and off they ran. Thump, 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 thumpity, thumpity, thump. Bill looked after them and grinned at his yellow taxi. Sure, he said, we're a speedy pair. We got them there. And it was con true. The conductor was just ready to signal the engineer to start. But he saw Tom and his mother come running down the platform, and he waited for them. He took the big suitcase from Tom's mother, held the door open for her, and handed her the big suitcase. Tom stepped on the train after her, panting from his run and holding his little suitcase. All aboard, called the conductor, waving his hand to the engineer. Then the conductor swung onto the train just as it began to move. You're a fast runner, he said to Tom. And to Tom's mother, he said, Lady, you just made it. Tom was still breathing hard, but he managed to gasp out, We made it because we had such a speedy taxi head. Speedy driver, you should have seen that taxi hurry. The 